crazy things continue to happen in the NFL as far as what they're trying to do about the playoff situation. Could there be eight teams in a neutral site for the AFC Championship? What does that mean for the Steelers' hopes? We'll talk about all that here on the North Shore Drive podcast in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Chris Carter here with Brian Batko. And, of course, talking about the Steelers' chances to beat the Browns and all the things they need to happen to make the playoffs. It's going to be a fun episode. Let's get into it. You are now listening to the North Shore Drive podcast. A show on all things Pittsburgh sports from the writers of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Hosted by Christopher Carter. And welcome to the North Shore Drive Podcast. I'm Chris Carter. He's Brian Batko. We are of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. It's the Friday edition. And will it be the last Friday edition of, of talking about a Steelers team whose season is alive? We'll find out this weekend. As always, this show is brought to you by the Accuracy Fan Advantage, the power to reject one of our Post-Gazette Steelers beat writers or me into your home or office. Augmented, using augmented reality, you can get an exclusive pregame breakdown from a Steelers expert standing right in your living room. Get the latest insights on starting lineups, key matchups, and critical stats at post-gazette.com. Slash Accuracy Fan Advantage. No apps or downloads. Just insider access to Steelers updates at post-gazette.com. Slash Accuracy Fan Advantage and get a real edge on this week's action. I'm the one doing it this week, so you'll get all the breakdowns right there. Brian, how you doing on this Friday? I'm doing well, Chris. Um, just, yeah, it's been a uh, been a heavy week covering the NFL, honestly. You know, the, the Mar Hamlin stuff, I was kind of in a funk for a little bit there. I think a lot of people were. And I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not even a player. I'm just a reporter who... Mm-hmm. You know, talked to Demar several times. You know, yeah, you many it. times when when I covered Pitt, but mm-hmm. it just puts you, uh, it puts you in a weird place a little mentally. So I think it was welcome news, of course, for for everybody around the league uh, on Thursday that there were so many positive developments with him down there in Cincinnati. Absolutely, I'm so glad that many prayers are being answered, and we hope that they continue to be answered in how we see uh, how we see him recover. You know, him being responsive and neurologically intact, very good signs. Very happy to, to see that. But in the fallout of that situation, of course, the Steelers, or excuse me, the Bills-Bengals game did not get played, and we have now learned that it won't get played. The NFL is not going to resume that game. It's just going to kind of just be off to the wayside. So with that, the NFL has taken a lot of things into consideration. One, Ravens-Bengals this weekend, which is for the AFC, which would be for the AFC North title, gets impacted by this game. So the NFL has decided if the Ravens win the game, there will be a coin toss to determine who is the AFC North crown winner. That is insane. I've never heard of something like that, but it, this is a very unusual situation, Brian. Yeah. Um, you know, there was no good, good way that was going to please everybody with this decision. I think, uh, you know, the one uh, upside here is that they at least made you know, made the call Thursday night so that there was some clarity yeah. for all the teams involved going into the weekend. I, I think if you're if you're the Bills, if you're the Bengals, if you're the Chiefs, you you're almost okay with whatever they decide as long as you know. Um, you know, if you're going to be disappointed about uh, the the method for pushing forward here, at least you can have a little bit more uh, heads up about it. So, um, and I think everybody too in, involved understands that. You know, this is this isn't anything anybody wanted. Fairness might have to take a little bit of a back seat, just in the name of, um, you know, being respectful to Debar Hamlin and that entire Absolutely. situation. You can't go back to Monday night. You can't go back in time to Tuesday when things were really uh, seeming like they were touch and go. So, um, you know, it, it's not a decision I would have had to have made. But uh, there were all sorts of, um, you know, kind of bizarre ideas being thrown out there on social media. Wednesday and Thursday, in the end, the NFL went with, you know, a little bit of randomness with this coin toss idea, but a whole lot of, uh, you know, if we get to this point, then we'll do this so that they could kick the can down the road a little bit and only have uh, odd solutions if they're absolutely necessary. Absolutely. And it appears that we have some explanations coming out literally as we're recording this from Adam Schefter in the moment saying that if the Chiefs lose Saturday and the Bills win Sunday because the Bills would be the number one seed, there would be no neutral site and that would come into play because the Bills would just get yeah, the it'd lock. just be straightforward. Um, yeah. you know, they wouldn't need to worry about the no contest Bills Bengals game. So, uh, I mean, that was the big thing that I kept hearing from people was. If you call that game off and you don't use it in the standings at all, it does give the Chiefs um, an advantage they otherwise would not have had. 
They obviously don't have to be concerned about the Bills running the table to tying them and winning the tiebreakers by virtue of beating them head to head. So again, you know, does this does this limit the Bills a little bit? I suppose, but I think having Demar Hamlin taking a turn for the better is you know by far the the biggest concern for them and. It's not like they're going to miss the playoffs because of this or be severely impacted in their seating. It, it, you know, lowers their ceiling somewhat, I suppose, for, uh, you know, chances to get the number one seed and home field advantage throughout. But uh, again, it's, it's kind of the best of the, the bad uh, options here for everybody. And, and now, according to Adam Schefter, the Bengals are now officially AFC North champs. There's no, considerations that have to be a matter of where the game would be played if if the Ravens beat them yeah that would be man that's going to be wild okay so all that's out of out of the way now and now it's also Adam Schefter confirms there's never been he said the NFL never actually considered an eighth eight eight playoff team scenario where was that coming from Chris why why did that even get put out into the into the internet on Thursday yeah uh, yeah, I think the people, people who didn't really know what they were talking about, I guess, were floating that rumor for some reason. Yeah, the, the, the rumor was floated. And the thing was is that a lot of people were talking about it. So you, no one knew where this was coming from. And this is where where the rumor mill starts. But I'm thankful. I don't care about a I think that seven teams is still too much for the NFL playoffs. Eight would have been just that you just, just be the NHL or, or, or the NBA at this point and put half the league or more than half the league in the, in the playoffs. You don't need to do do that. Um, I think that that would have, you know, the, the NFL needs to, they, they've acknowledged the situation. They need to make sure that DeMar Hamlin is given the best care possible, which it appears that he is. They also need to make sure that the mental health is taken care of all, all the players who were involved in that situation and were impacted by it when it happened. Do all of that, but you don't need to make competitive considerations way down the road. And, oh, this was unfair. Just go forward with the season and play it how you're going to play it. Yeah, it seems pretty clear now that some of these more outside the box ideas of like a buy for the AFC and then a buy for the NFC and then push or pushing the entire uh, playoff schedule back. You know, the the memo from the league that came out Thursday night pretty much said in there with a quote from Roger Goodell that they wanted to, um, you know, make this call with, uh, you know, uh, their principles have been to limit disruption across the league and minimize competitive inequities. So um, that to me, you know, translate that. We, we didn't want to make 16 problems by solving one, essentially. So that's always what I assume that the NFL would do. A lot of the times the, you know, most logical solution is a lot easier and simpler than uh, whatever some message board is cooking up uh, with, you know, looking like the dude from It's Always Sunny with stuff posted up on a pegboard and <laughs> circling stuff and drawing lines from here to there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I get, I know exactly which scene you're talking about. So, so some people, you know, I'm sure some people are like, we'll just put every team in. We'll just have the, we'll just have the playoff, uh, the tournament you know, Mark madness. Yeah. Oh geez. That'd be ridiculous. But now that we know all of that. We do know it goes back to what we've always known. The Steelers need to win. Yeah, and that was the part that, that like roped the Steelers and their fans in for yeah. a few hours on Thursday. It's like if they go to an eighth team, they've got an even better chance. Now they only need one other thing to happen in addition to beating the Browns. Right. Yeah, but now that's out the out the out off the table. The Steelers need to beat the Browns. The Patriots need to lose to the Bills, and the Dolphins need to lose to the Jets. We'll talk about those three things and a couple other things that are Steelers relevant in the next segment here on the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. But first, we're going to talk to you guys about our sponsors at Bally Pool and Spa. Wouldn't it be nice if the holidays were stress-free? A hot tub, a swim spa, or a sauna for Bally Pool and Spa will help you feel like it is. Relax and soak in a, in a hot tub or a swim spa for Bally Pool and Spa before the snow flies because it's coming back, y'all. Y'all know that it is. Refresh and rejuvenate in a thin layer sauna that is sure to melt your stress away faster than a frosty in Aruba. Save big now on all in-stock hot tubs, swim spas, or saunas by visiting valleypoolspa.com. That's valleypoolspa.com. Back here in the North Shore Drive podcast, Chris Carter, Brian Backo of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Let's get to Steelers relevant games and give you our picks right here for this weekend because there's several that are relevant. There are two that y'all might not realize are relevant, and it's because they impact 
the Steelers' draft position. Not for their own pick, but for the pick they traded for from the Bears when they traded away Chase Claypool. Of course, they traded. They got a second-round pick for that, the Bears' natural second-round pick, which the Bears, if things line up, could end up be giving them the first overall pick of the first round and the Steelers the first overall pick of the second round, which is the 32nd overall pick. But for that to happen, the Vikings at 12 and four have to beat the three and 13 bears who I believe will be without Justin Fields. Um, and the Texans at two 13 and one have to beat the Colts at four 11 and one who are starting Sam Ellinger in Indianapolis. Brian, I actually think both of these things can happen. I think the Vikings will stomp the, the Bears. This is that meaningless game that Kirk Cousins will will throw five touchdowns for and be like, you like that, and then get stomped in the first round, round of the playoffs. But the Texans, they're a terrible football team. But so are the Colts. And I just think with the Colts' quarterback situation, this is the perfect storm for Davis Mills, the Texans quarterback, the Texans situation. They were really close to beating the Chiefs a couple weeks ago. I think this is the perfect storm for them to finish the, the year on a win and rob themselves of the first overall pick. See, I actually think the opposite. I think the team here that is going to have a little bit of like, when, when you're trying to figure out these week 18 meaningless games between two mm-hmm. teams that are eliminated, you, you just have to like go with your gut and go with a hunch of who's going to be more motivated. It's like a, it's like a bowl game kind of, it's like, you know, Who's going to have that intrinsic motivation? I, I think the Colts in what's obviously going to be their last game under Jeff Saturday, you know, they, they got it. They got their faces rubbed in it a little bit last week with the cave on Thibodeau stuff and Nick Foles. And, you know, then he added insult to injury by claiming he didn't know who Jeff Saturday was. So I, I think Saturday can like get one last sort of good performance out of them and, There's also something to be said for not wanting to be the team that loses to the worst team. So um, maybe he can play up that angle of guys do not lose to the two and 13 and one Texans or else you will be even more embarrassed than you already are. So, um, Hey, no matter how it plays out though, Chris, uh, that trade could not have worked out better from the time that it was made. Uh, The Steelers, you know, clearly they weren't just punting on their season at that point. Look at the run that they've gone on since then. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, they bet on the Bears and their tough schedule and not being able to figure it out, and they haven't. So whether they get right. picked 32 or 33, uh, they are in business. And I guess, um, you know, to take your point, you know, even further, another game that could affect the Steelers would be Cowboys commanders, because if the commanders uh, were to lose, they will have a higher pick than the Steelers at seven, nine and one. But if they win and the Steelers lose, uh, then they could lose, uh, lose a spot to Washington. So uh, it's just a weird thing covering the team right now, not knowing whether the season's over or is going to continue past this week. I know we were in this boat last year too, but it doesn't ever get, less strange it 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 doesn't now let's get into some of those strange matchups that the Steelers need in this situation first the Patriots at the Bills eight and eight Patriots at the 12 and three Bills the Patriots to make the playoffs I believe they need to not only win this game but then hope that the Dolphins lose to the Jets we'll get into that matchup in a bit but of course the Bills now they do have something to play for if they win they get the one seed they would get the bye week that would give them a chance to kind of get some more time to recover. So there is incentive for the Bills to win this game. But this is also a lot on the Bills' plate after watching what happened with DeMar Hamlin. I, however, think that the Bills are such a talented team, and I think they'll be extra motivated. Now that they've gotten the news Thursday that DeMar Hamlin is responsive and that he's neurologically intact and that he's trending upwards and it seems like maybe he can he'll, he'll be able to heal fully from this, I think that they'll, they'll be able to put that behind them be motivated, go out and play spirited football in front of their home fans and win a big football game to give themselves a chance at the one seed. They don't don't necessarily win. Of course, also if the Chiefs win, it won't matter because they'll be beforehand. But I think that this does give them, they they still want to win one and kind of do one for for DeMar. Yeah, I I think that's that's for sure an, an extra layer to it. You know, the Patriots, though, I mean, this is their, this is the difference between their season continuing or missing the playoffs yet again. So um, that would be what, two and three years since Brady left Foxborough, you know, you know, Mac Jones wasn't there for that first year, but you just have to think that the people in that building 
will will obviously not be happy and it would you know it would be a little bit of an indictment of, of Bill Belichick if they miss the playoffs um you know for the second time in three years so yeah I mean it's, it's a situation where I think the Patriots you know they do have more to play for because it's it's literally win or go home for them but yeah the, the Bills are going to be inspired I think and I guess it's just a question of are they more, um, you know, kind of motivated by all that's gone on this week with with their brother Demar Hamlin, or is there just a simple, um, just rust factor, if that's the right word? I mean, you you had to get in a headspace to practice again uh, on Wednesday, so uh, difficult, unprecedented, uncharted waters for them to be in. We all know they're a better team than the Patriots on paper. We all know that the environment there in Buffalo is. Uh, probably going to be incredible, I would yeah, think. I think so too. Just people uh, turning out and celebrating all, all the good news about the Mar Hamlin. So uh, that that's that's one that I would still probably lean Bills over Patriots, even though again New England, um, you know, they have the ultimate carrot of making the playoffs dangling out there for them. Absolutely, the other game the Steelers need need to go. The Patriots, uh, or I should say, excuse me, the Bills did beat the Patriots the first time they played. 24 to 10 back on December 1st. So, um, you know, again, obvious X's and O's advantage there to Buffalo. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think that the the, page, the the Bills might, you know, they'll be motivated. They might rest some key players, but still I think they have a lot of advantages on their side. The Patriots are terrible on offense. As long as the Bills don't throw pick sixes to the Patriots, I think they win this game. But the, I think the, the other interesting game in this matchup here in, in the Steelers, just array of things that need to happen is the Jets beating the Dolphins. The Jets are 7-9. and nine. They're mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. They have no chance, so they literally are just playing for pride at this point. The Dolphins are 8-8, eight and eight, but on a five-game skid, which is crazy, Brian. If they had won any of their last five games, the Steelers would be mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. It looks like it's going to be Skylar Thompson back at quarterback again as Teddy Bridgewater has been limited in practice the last couple days, and he's been dealing with the, with the hand with the hand wrist injury that he's had. It's, you know, from what we understand, it's making it tough to grip of football which means the jets would have a chance to beat the dolphins on their third string quarterback but brian do they actually pull that off with their own quarterback issues yeah it's hard to say i mean ne neither team is feeling real good about themselves no at the moment and i mean you look at the dolphins in this slide it's unforgivable to to lose this many games in a row when you were all but in the playoff picture five straight but none of those five consecutive losses have been all that bizarre. I mean, they, they've had to go to San Francisco and the Chargers. They've had to go to Buffalo. They lost to a Green Bay team that, that's surging. And then they lost at New England, which is probably the, the most disappointing of all of those last week. But that was with their quarterback situation in flux, as it is again. So Skylar Thompson, to this point, um, you know, hasn't won a game that he's played substantially. You know, he got wrecked by the Jets when he came in there in relief back in, in early October. So I know there was a little bit of like positive buzz about him in the draft. And that's, you know, kind of why the dolphins surprised some people by taking him in the seventh round, you know, Mike McDaniel is going to have to make like his mentor, Kyle Shanahan with Brock Purdy and mm -hmm. build kind of a perfect game plan around Thompson. If, if they're going to beat the jets in this one, it, it's again, it's like a bull game. You have to try to decide if you think the Jets are going to have enough juice in them to want to play the spoiler and knock off the Dolphins on the road in a game that they otherwise wouldn't care about, ah, man, I can't, I can't take Skylar Thompson. I think regardless of who's at QB for the Jets, uh, they're, they've got a better roster at the moment. Dolphins are very banged up. I'm going to say the Jets win that one as well. Wow. So if all these things happen the way that you and I are saying happen, do you Steelers. agree with me? I agree with you. I think that I think that the Bills win and the Jets win, just the way that the things have played out for the Steelers. Um, so what we're both saying here is that 1 p.m. Oh, I mean, all these games happen at 1 p.m. But still, at one one p on 1 p.m. at Acker Stadium, it will come down to can the Steelers beat the Browns in week 18? We'll talk about that matchup in just a minute here on the North Shore Drive podcast. But first, we got to talk to you guys about Yinzers in the Berg, the number one place that you can get all your Pittsburgh sports apparel. So Yinzers, listen up. There are two kind of two stores in the Strip District where you can get Steelers, Pirates, Penguins, Pitt, 
anything Pittsburgh sports, they've got there and they've got a ton of different merchandise, not just shirts. They've got, they've got accessories. They've got hats. They've got pants. They've got gloves. If you want to get some winter gear, they've got that there too. Or if you can't get to the strip district, go to their website, yinzerspgh.com. They've got stuff updating every week with new Pittsburgh merchandise, Pittsburgh sports merchandise to get for your, for your favorite fan, favorite fans or to get for yourself. If you're just that big a fan. So if you think the Steelers are making the playoffs, you want to get some gear for that, go get some Steelers gear at Yinzer in the Berg or visit Yinzer yinzerspgh.com again that's yinzerspgh.com for all your pittsburgh sports apparel back here on the north shore drive podcast i'm chris carter he's brian batko brian let's get down to this ultimate to this ultimate matchup that this is what most matters the most for the steelers if none of these other games matter if they lose this game they're playing the seven and nine Browns. The Browns got a bit of a rebound last week. They they were able to beat the Commanders. They've been on a back and forth basis the past few weeks. They lost to the Bengals twenty three to ten, beat the Ravens thirteen to three, lost to the Saints seventeen to ten, then beat the Commanders twenty four to ten. And in that game, Deshaun Watson threw three touchdown passes, his first multi touchdown game since he returned for them this season uh, back on December fourth against the Houston Texans. All that being said. I still think this game comes down to what the Steelers have have done in the in the second half of the season. Stop the run and run the football and possess the football and trust that Deshaun Watson and Amari Cooper aren't going to kill you. Still t- take Amari Cooper out because he crushed them in the first game. I think they need to still make him the primary option like they did for Devontae Adams with the Raiders. But trust that the rest of your guys are going to win their matchups. Trust that your pass rush is going to get home. Focus on stuffing the run and feed the ball to Najee Harris, to J- and Jalen Warren, and let that be the way you control this football game. Yeah, pretty similar matchup to the Vegas one a couple weeks ago. I think, you know, a balanced balanced offense that you need to deal with here, much more so than Baltimore, Carolina, Atlanta, maybe even the Colts um, when you face them back on, on Monday night football. So that's, you know, that's going to be a test for a Steelers defense that has been playing really well lately. Deshaun Watson, you know, I, I think the Browns have been playing better. He's been playing better lately. Mm-hmm. This year, while it is kind of a lost season for them, I think there would be a lot of good vibes in in Cleveland, relatively speaking, uh, if, if they can finish out with a win playing spoiler for the Steelers in this one. And, of course, if, if Deshaun finishes with a good game uh, to end this season, even though they aren't going to be in the playoffs, you know, the reason why I hesitate to um, think that the Steelers are going to have an easy time here against the Browns uh, of their eight wins this year, you know, only one has been by more than one possession. You know, they, I agree. They're, 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 they're fire. Their recipe, their formula for victory is again, like you said, Chris, it's working. It works for them. They do it well. Mm-hmm. But it's inherently a very small margin for error. You know, they're like a they're like a basketball team that plays very few possessions, like a Virginia that lost to Pitt on Tuesday mm-hmm. night. You know, they kind of let any team hang in a game. I'm not saying Pitt's not good, but they you know they'll let any team hang in a game because they uh, they play so few possessions. That's what the Steelers are doing. The football version of that. Mike Tomlin has pretty much said he's comfortable in these low possession games. So uh, kind of anything can happen. You know, you you lose one fumble, you throw one pick, you give up one deep ball. That can be the difference. It was going against them way too often early in the year against the mm-hmm. Patriots and the Jets and the Dolphins. Things have started to turn the other way lately, but I think on paper, Steelers Browns are pretty evenly matched, and that's why I feel like it could go either way. Even though the Browns are eliminated and the Steelers have everything to fight for. That's that's kind of wild there. The Steelers seven and five on the season in one possession games with their final scores. Um, kind of crazy when you think about it, uh, and especially when you look at all all but the Saints game since the bye have been one possession wins uh, for the for the, for yeah, the Steelers. I wonder if I wonder if any team has played more one possession games than the Steelers this year. I mean, I know it's been a season of parity around the league, but it's been a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, but the Steelers in particular are just. They can never play a normal game other than those two blowouts at the hands of the Bills and the Eagles. Uh, it's, It's just been razor close every week. It has been. But all that being said, we talked about what they need to do. 
do the Steelers get the job done, Brian Back? Give us your prediction, your final score, and how you see it getting there. Yeah, I think they I think they ultimately do have enough in this game. So, you know, to bury the lead, yeah, I've got the Steelers against all odds. Storming back here to make the playoffs. Uh, wow. really, yeah, really unthinkable. But, um, you know, you look at each individual result as we have broken it down and, you know, none of them are, are outlandish. In fact, last I checked, you know, Vegas had everything that the Steelers need to happen. That team has been favored, including them against the Browns. So I'm going to go Steelers 24, Browns 18. Um, I think they do enough to smash the run against Nick Chubb. I, you know, the tackling came around in the second half of that Browns game. Mark Robinson, I'm not saying he's a godsend or anything. You know, we, we've needed to pump the brakes on him a little bit yeah. in the preseason. But the Steelers are more comfortable and confident in him lately by virtue of giving him that start in Baltimore. So I think he can be an asset to their run defense again this week. And, you know, again, the strides continue for this young offense and, and Kenny Pickett. I think he builds off the momentum of yet another game winning drive to beat the Ravens and the Steelers sneak in much like last season. Now, I don't think this team is going to do any damage really, but you know, if you are the bills, if you are the Bengals, if you are the chiefs, well, maybe not the chiefs because they saw this happen last year and they were looking their chops. But mm -hmm. if you're one of those other teams who could face the Steelers, in the wild card round, I think you'd I think you'd rather see a miserable Patriots group or a reeling Dolphins team than the Steelers in there at the moment. I agree with that assessment, especially because the steel like the Patriots, you know, you need to throw the pick six. The Steelers have shown that like if they if if they run the football on you and you don't get a few things on, on offense going, they can force you to kind of hang around with them. Um and, and it'll be it would be interesting. But I agree with your assessment. I think the Steelers, Steelers win. I give less points in this game. I say 19-13 Steelers. Uh, but I think one thing that really favors them is you're right. The Browns wore down the Steelers in that game. If you go back to the win that they had back in week three, the Browns had the ball for 36 minutes. And the Steelers had the ball for 23. That is ridiculous when you look at at, at, the, at the, the difference in time of possession. The Steelers at the time were the worst time of possession team in football. Their defense was getting worn down every week. And it got worse and worse and worse. Since then, the ties have changed. The Steelers ranked fifth in time of possession. They're running the football. They're possessing the football. And the Browns have one of the worst rushing defenses in the league. Feed Dodgy Harris. Feed Jalen Warren. Let them run the ball. I still say it's close. But I think the Steelers do enough to possess the football and force the Browns to make mistakes at the end of the game so that the Steelers get the win. Yeah, I mean, the Steelers always seem to have a pretty good plan against Miles Garrett, you know, preventing him from completely wrecking a game other than maybe that 2019 Thursday nighter against Mason Rudolph. They, I, you know, I, I think they'll have more answers for Amari Cooper and David Njoku than they did in that first matchup. But even that game, you know, the Browns, they kind of, yeah, like you said, Chris, they started getting downhill a little bit on the Steelers and dictated mm -hmm. that game. It wasn't really a 29 17 loss. You know, there was that yeah, touchdown the throw around at the right, end. Yeah, the, the lateral at the end that, that made it look worse than it was. That was really another one possession game on this team's ledger. And as I recall, a game that, you know, easily could have had, you know, gone a different way if Deontay Johnson, George Pickens make a catch or two, if there's no illegal man downfield mm -hmm. called yeah. on the Jalen Warren. Uh, shovel pass so yeah two two teams that I think are you know fairly similar in terms of talent I think you know the, the Browns as much as they talk about wanting to play the spoiler and, and kick the Steelers out of there um, they know this season's over for them and that they'll they'll reset in 2023 after a very very odd 2022 in which they didn't get their quarterback until week 12. Another factor in this the, the third down percentage from that game, the, the Steelers were one of nine on third downs. They were they were terrible on third downs early in the season. Now they're seventh best in the NFL. They have a 43.9% conversion rate on third downs. That's just behind the Niners and the Eagles and the Bengals, the Cowboys, the Chiefs, and the Bills. So that part of the offense is working. I think, again, possessing the football, running the football, keeping the ball in their hands and not turning it over, that's their key to win here. We'll see if they do.
Brian, Jerry, and Ray will be at the Steelers facility all leading up all leading up to this game this weekend with all the injury updates. We'll keep you updated with that here on the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. But for the North Shore Drive podcast, thanks for checking us out here. Stay tuned with the Post Gazette's coverage, and we'll all be at this at Acrisure Stadium 1 p.m. Sunday to see what the Steelers' fate is. And then t- stay here tuned on this channel for Paul Zeiss and Adam Bittner be breaking things down with their post game show. And then I'll have Ray Fittipato on the Monday episode of the North Shore Drive breaking things down for you all to let you know what the Steelers' situation is and the outlook for the week for the weeks to come if they're in the playoffs or if it's time to start the offseason of rebuilding from brian and chris everyone have a great weekend we'll see you next week thanks for tuning in to another episode of the north shore drive podcast of the pittsburgh post gazette if you're watching this video on youtube please like the video and subscribe to our youtube channel for six months of digital access to post-gazette.com for just six dollars click the link down below in the description